Hello. Hey there, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. I'm assuming some people will be joining. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. Sorry, I'm a minute late. I was traveling this week, and El Olito won't. Here today, I just got the notification, so welcome. Okay, is Ani on the call? Ani? Today we have, it looks like another. Uh, expert series talk. So, hi everybody. This is the mid July uh, meeting of Ag Observability. Um, this is a CNCF sponsored event. So, please don't do or say anything uh, in the chat or otherwise that would be in violation of that code. Did Ani pop in already today, Chris? Were you here a minute ago? I didn't uh, see him join yet. Hi, guys. Okay. On me. Hi. Sorry, Hi. it took a while to sign in. Oh. Sign in. Hey, Matt. Um, well, if, if you have done the introductions, uh, I can um, quickly introduce me and the team, and then we can get started on the presentation. Uh, we have a few introductory slides on OpenSearch, and then some of the work we've done with Open Telemetry. So, but I'll take your lead on like, should we um, go ahead or is there some other topic? Uh, no, I believe um, uh, you're, 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 you're the talk of the day. Um, okay, great. Uh, we don't have any other business. Uh, take as much time as, as, as you like. Uh, we'll be posting the recording later. Um, is there anything else that anyone needs to cover today before we get into the main event? I was just seeing that Ani's joining now, which is good because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have Ani on the call with me. I think Eli will join uh, shortly. Oh, and uh, I think so. Let's get started. And then uh, Ani, jump in anytime uh, you you want to talk about a slide. I don't know if we have the your slides, but uh, I'll go with what I have and you can jump in if you want to add anything. OK, all right. Sounds good. Thank you for uh, thank you for giving this talk. Yeah. Looking forward to it. All right. Can you guys uh, see the slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, just you know, at any time, interrupt me, and then you know, uh, and this is more of a you know, it's not like me talking to you. It's more of a uh, exercise where I I. It, uh, give some information and you can ask questions anytime. So the first thing is uh, some of you like Joan and others, I think know what open search is, but I want to introduce what open search is in this forum. Open search is a Lucene engine Apache to license based uh, search and analytics suite. Um, open search is used in variety of applications. Um, it is uh, widely used in search cases, um, semantic search, 
uh, vector DB search and more. Um, and then we also have 60% a, a and more uses of observability. A lot of a uh, lot of uh, applications use open search for the rich analytics capability for their log analytics and metric and trace analytics scenarios. And then we have up and coming security analytics, which is also basically uh, extending on looking at logs and doing threat detection and more. And uh, uh, Open Search has a powerful visualization uh, system called Open Search dashboards. And a lot of the folks who use Open Search and the analytics capability um, use um, the visualization capabilities. And lastly, uh, Open Search is uh, used in a variety of uh, anomaly detection, machine learning, and most recently, uh, Gen AI scenarios uh, for their RAG. Uh, capabilities and knowledge base uh, capabilities, which uh, Open Search is really good at. Um, from a statistical perspective, like what, how Open Search is doing, um, we, we've been uh, very very successful for the last uh, several years, and we've recently reached over six hundred million downloads of um, the project. Um, we have since the launch, uh, we've uh, over eighteen releases. And we have a growing uh, partnership of, uh, you know, we have about 75 plus project partners. And since this uh, trusted forum, I'll just say that uh, confidentially, if you see a lot of these slides, um, there is Linux Foundation in the slides. And the thing I wanted to talk to you guys as well as part of uh, this open telemetry discussion was that we are um, working with uh, very closely with Linux Foundation and looking into move, moving open search as a top level project uh, in the foundation. Uh, we also would like to have more deeper engagement with CNCF and open telemetry community. And, um, you know, and we, our objective, uh, and I'll talk about this in the next slide, is our vision is really about how do we grow open search to be, um, you know, expand the community, expand our maintainers, expand the, our users of open search uh, and solve variety of the challenges we have in some of the uh, applications I just talked about, which is search, observability and security. Um, and so with that, I'll just also quickly talk before we go into open telemetry and some of how we have integrated with open telemetry, uh, I'll talk about open search uh, performance. One of the things open search, because it's a search and analytics engine is something which you know we've invested a lot in over the years and we're doing really well is our performance improvement. Uh, since our 1.0 launch to 2.12, which is uh, earlier this year, uh, our release, um, we have you know had significant improvements in indexing query and storage. Um, we have done a lot of improvements in our vector KNN algorithms as well. Um, and so you can see some of the numbers here. So I won't spend too much time unless you guys have a uh, lot more questions. The only one thing I'll say is uh, since our 2.12 release uh, till uh, our release is coming up soon, which is 2.16, we have continued to improve our performance, and we've also done a lot of improvements in our vector capabilities and our, um, you know, core search capabilities for log analytics. And then um, I'll turn this over to Ani if, if he's able to present. Otherwise, I'll go ahead. This is about more details on how our architecture for observability is. I can do that. Hey, uh, do you mind if I take over the presentation? Sure, go ahead. Or can I screen share? Okay. I'll stop the share. Yeah. Cool. Can you guys see the slide deck? Yeah. So I need now to stop sharing and reshare. Yeah, I need to stop sharing and reshare again. Yes, now I should reshare again. Hey, Jonah. Hey, Jerome. Hey, how you doing? 
Now can you see it again? Yep, good. Perfect, perfect. So let us start from where we left off. So I think primarily, uh, let's go with what it means to search data. And then we go from search into how we search and into the concepts of observability and how it is integrated with open telemetry. Uh, feel free to interrupt me anytime in between. Good. So I think being primarily a search engine, open search has been used for a lot of log analytics use cases. And the main reason was it's able to search grok, uh, do like near terms, fuzzy searches, a lot of these Typical search use cases are very powerful for log analytics, and that's where it started becoming more popular. And those use cases are defined as filter. Filtering can be done with a Lucene-like query language or open search's own simple dashboards UI language, which allows you to do Boolean searches and text searches, uh, grokking keywords, and that's the primary experience people are familiar with, which is discover in open search. Beyond filtering, uh, generally in the space, we refer to a term called querying. Querying is a much broader term which can use filtering, joins, and use other concepts. So OpenSearch does support SQL as a native language now, where you can query all the data in OpenSearch as SQL. But SQL itself is just query. For observability, discovering, and investigating, uh, filter and query are good starting points, but we generally need a language which is responsible for or used to doing investigative capabilities where you can build in things and discover new information and patterns. And that's where the pipe processing language comes in. So these are the three types of broad capabilities in open search, which start from basic filtering, querying with native and widely adopted SQL and a pipe processing language. Any questions on the language interfaces or the human interface into how people can deal with open search and query open search? For observability, we'll primarily focus on PPL for now. Uh, I assume SQL and Lucene are much more popular. Uh, if you have any questions in SQL and Lucene, I can take them. Uh, with PPL, we have a wide array of syntax and commands that we support. I'll go through a few commands quickly. And uh, the general nature of the language is you have source equal to. Source equal to is a starting point. It can refer to indices in open search. It can refer to open search clusters, which are not local, but remote open search clusters. It can refer to connected data sources, connected endpoints. So source equal to is the first point where you start where your query is supposed to execute or where your query is supposed to get to the data at. Once you have source, then you have commands like uh, deduplication, describe, Evaluation is a full support of arithmetic and mathematical expressions. Uh, you have parsing commands. Parse is similar to grok. You have search commands, sorting. Stats is a very interesting command. So I'll take a minute on stats. Stats is X, Y, Z. You can cover X, Y, and Z axes on stats command. Uh, the commands are separated by a keyword by and span. So if you have stats, you can go into by count and comma separate as many uh, axes or time series as you want. If it's a time series use case, you can do span by time and bucket by time. If it's a use case which is not time series, you can use any bucketing numbers and start having a Z axis available over there. Uh, I'll move over to other topics, but let me know if you have any specific questions on PPL. I'm trying to cover ground. I assume we have an entire hour and we'll also cover uh, a demo shortly. Uh, maybe a quick question. Uh, when should I go for a PPL uh, versus SQL? Uh, is, is there any recommendations around that? Uh, generally speaking, uh, I'll just get my charger. I think I have my Docker, Docker running, so my laptop is almost about dead now. So when you're working with discovering data, uh, discovering data should primarily be PPL. Uh, it's easier to find stuff. It's an easier syntax to learn. But if you are working and you're familiar with SQL, it's okay. It works with SQL. Give me one second. Let's get my charger and come back.
So hi. Um, to continue what Annie said, hi, this is Lior. Hi everyone. I'm from uh, also from uh, Open Search team. I'm working with Annie. Just to mention that we have, uh, I think he'll um, discuss this later, but we do have a, a demo that we can show uh, much of any uh, mentioned here. So uh, if you have questions about the uh, look and feel or how to operate things, then uh, we can show that in the demo later. I had a quick question, which is, um, is this the tag observability call? Yes, it is. Yes. Okay, I joined late, so I was, uh, when I heard open search, I was wondering if I'm in the right Zoom call. All right, thank you. Yeah, I think last last week, uh, or last time, uh, Alolita mentioned that uh, there's gonna be a demo on open search. Oh, okay. yeah, it's, I, I can, it, in the meeting invite, there are meeting minds. Um, they should have a link to that as well. And the, the, the slides and, and a summary of the talk and things will be there uh, after. But welcome. Okay, can I continue? Good, sure, thanks. Thank you. So uh, moving ahead, uh, I just want to broadly cover PPL and then we can jump into the observability stack. So PPL in open search is primarily a language construct in open search, but we also have PPL flavors, which work with Spark. Uh, there is PromQL support with PPL and also native PromQL via PPL, which we'll see in a demo above. There is PPL based visualizations that can be created and the language spec for PPL is independent of open search. Uh, it is a language spec that can be adopted by other players. There's an observe, there's a query languages tag where also PPL abstractions and how others can contribute and make PPL a general language supported in the other tag. Uh, I'll move ahead into observability for now. Uh, going beyond PPL for now, any questions on this? Good. So the observability stack for open search is primarily consisting of open search the engine which is the big blue blocks uh, box in the bottom section uh, the user interfaces are consisting of management uis which can be used to configure or set up workflows and solution uis which are metrics uis logs uis trace uis and we'll go through some of these in our ui in our demos. The primary language for interaction for developers and users is also PPL. PPL does support machine language commands, uh, querying, pivoting, stats. So it becomes an easy mechanism for both developers and users to work with open search. Uh, while working with open search, we also acknowledge there's a lot of cost concerns when it comes to observability. Uh, with that native Spark integration and Spark accelerations can also work through open search and it can be seamlessly extended into infrequently used data or low cost data stores like S3 and other object stores. An important part of working with observability is schemas. Uh, the entire stack is working on something we call as open search simple schema. An open search simple schema is a physical manifestation of OTL schemas. As we get OTL schemas via OTLP or other wire formats, these are transformed into open search mappings and open search indices. And if if I just few few sentences about this. Sure, go for it. So yeah, so I think one main concern was that eventually uh, open telemetry uh, protocol has consolidated the ECS schema and the evolution of the semantic convention is a direction that we're very much uh, trying to align to. And this is why we actually initiate the uh, simple schema, um, actual uh, physical manifestation of these uh, 
components so we can better follow the guidelines of the semantic convention and we can represent these uh, components within the actual mapping component. So it, it becomes much more uh, direct and fluent the transformation from the OTIL uh, protocol directly into the index mapping that we have today. And there is also a, a catalog repository that uh, explains and has all these sections uh, outlaid there. And I think we have a, a link in the next pages that can, can give directions on how to actually start with the uh, simple schema and what are the best practices. Good. Any questions on schemas? Or how we support open telemetry schemas in open search? These schemas are generally transformed by the writers. So the open search exporter for open telemetry or the ingestion agents who understand OTLP can transform into these schema formats. Also fluent bit is baked into how open source schemas are written. So fluent bit and fluent D can also write into open source simple schemas. So this is all done on the edge as far as possible. And just, just to extend we, that, go ahead. yeah, sorry. So we, we do, we have developed um, or contributed an exporter, open search exporter to the auto country. So I think this is also significant. So there are multiple ways, as Annie mentioned, to ingest data into open search. You have the uh, data prepare, you have fluent bit, you have auto um, uh, exporter. So there are multiple ways that can be um, selected to do this ingestion. And part of them is the transformation into the uh, simple schema, including uh, compliance with the uh, semantic conventions. Is there any thought towards OTLP ingestion directly? OTLP so, today is supported yeah. by the ingestion layer. Uh, within open search, I think there has been requests to add native support for OTLP ingestion. I think we need to just evaluate how we add that and what are the features it would support. One of the primary concerns is being a search engine, which is also supposed to have serving queries. Uh, OTLP layer, is, if it is as is, should be okay. That can be added into open search uh, going through an RFC. But if it requires transformations like service map computation or any pre-ingestion analytics, that would be heavy processing on the engine side, which need to be sort of cared about. Uh, barring that, uh, the second alternative architecture that is supported today is you can have the OTLP exporter that can do most of the heavy lifting on the edge in the processors in, in the collectors or you use predefined computation in data prepper, which can do service map and other pre-aggregations. So large scale clusters running like uh, 100K to 200K traces per second can support without like putting load on the engine. Uh, does that answer your question, Jono? Yeah, I mean, just trying to remove friction for the users where, you know, like using exporters is not very common with open telemetry anymore. Uh, most Got observability it. tools take the protocol directly now. So Got that's it. why I mentioned it. Okay, makes sense. I think we can definitely explore that. The current option for that would be via data prepper, uh, which sort of separates out some of the compute. Uh, engine straight directly can also be an option. Good, thanks, Jonah. So uh, as we have the schemas, I think the other part of observability, which is seemingly difficult, but not realized is I have fluent bit data. Maybe I have uh, Apache logs sent over fluent bit. Uh, maybe I have VPC flow logs and I have different types of known log types. So every single time an observability user starts up, the log types and how you want to present the log types as dashboards, 
How do you want to configure alerts on them? What are the best alerts to configure? What are the best anomaly detection policies to configure? The setup of onboarding becomes always difficult and challenging and time consuming. So to reduce the lead time, uh, there's a section called integrations. Integrations, also called as instant on observability, it takes in and understands the notion of schemas. It version controls the schemas to see if the schema is available for a particular data set. You can launch these predefined visualizations, dashboards, some sample queries without having to build them as a user. They support a user-facing UI but they also have a developer interface. So as a developer, you get an SDK and a CLI to create your own integrations and contribute your own integrations and version them. We'll go through a demo of integrations in a while to cover them in more detail. Any questions on this diagram before we move ahead? We'll run through quick features as a checklist and then jump into the demo. So uh, for metrics, uh, the concept in open source that we have been following more is you can always store metrics in open source. And you can store metrics in open source via OTL exporters. But open source is a good metric store, but not the best one out there. Uh, as we keep on improving open source, today, majority of the gravity in metrics is with Prometheus. And we support bring your own metrics from Prometheus. You attach Prometheus as a data source and you can connect Prometheus into a metrics explorer UI, or you can use it in other places in open search via PPL or native PromQL. Uh, the native PromQL UIs for open search are in development. So currently uh, native capabilities for PromQL are supported via the command line interfaces and APIs. Uh, are you using the remote read uh, protocol? For that or are you looking at blocks? So this is a federated query. Line? This is a federated query. So we don't store or we don't pull data from Prometheus. This is a query time federation. Oh, I see. So okay. query time federation uses APIs, uh, not the remote read capabilities. Like we don't want to create duplicate copies of data, sure, sure. Uh, but the query federate the query engine uh, being a query engine also, we can efficiently federate and plan our queries and plan joins between Prometheus and other data sources. And do you, do you, do you, do you do caching and things like that as part of that integration, or like is a dashboard that updates every thirty seconds going to issue a query every thirty seconds through that? Like, Currently, of, uh, it's pure queries. We've realized queries to Prometheus, especially for dashboards and visualizations, are not expensive. And Prometheus as an engine does do its own caching and its own uh, sort of optimization. So we don't want to overdo or like double do that. Yeah, thanks. I was just curious about the, the nature of that integration, how, how thick it is. It's fairly lightweight. The only layer that adds logic is we have a physical and logical plan that is generated with PromQL. So when you get a return from PromQL, we parse the return into a unified data frame format for open search. So the entire UI layer of open search doesn't know it is Prometheus. So it becomes easy for the visualization framework and all the UI frameworks to deal with Prometheus data. But on the query side, you are, can do PPL. So PPL is a command like mstats, which can do a stats command for metrics and translate that. So it becomes easy for PPL users to get in, but majority of the Prometheus users like PromQL. So we support PromQL as a native language and the native PromQL queries can also be fired and parsed as uh, open source data frames for entering. So here are some of the commands. I think uh, the command uh, that I'm showing over here is PromQL catalog dot native query and note native queries can take full PromQL syntax. What you're seeing below is a PromQL option and its PPL counterpart. So PPL counterpart will be source equal to PromQL catalog dot node CPU set seconds total. Its counterpart in PromQL would be node CPU seconds total just as a term. So all these commands have a mapping in PPL, whereas the PPL mapping is maybe 85% complete. It doesn't support the full grammar. If you need the full grammar, you go to PromQL. Any questions on PromQL support? We can go through quickly in the demo also. 
Cool. Thank you. We can also ingest OTLP native metrics from data prepper. Uh, data prepper or OTL exporters can push OTLP format metrics. Uh, these metrics are stored in open search indices. These are actual stored metrics. And with these metrics, you can also generate visualizations, same to how you could do it from Prometheus and open search. Uh, there are commands such as lock patterns, lock tail, lock to trace correlations, having a trace analytics UI, service map UI. Uh, these are some of the observability front end space facing features. Uh, I think last year or two years ago, I think we worked with Jonah to add Jaeger support to get into open search. Similarly, trace support from OTL exporters or OTLP exporters were added like a year and a half ago. So currently we have Jaeger and OTL as two trace formats. These don't support service map pre-calculations. Uh, data prepper is the only one that supports service map pre-calculations. I think we need to work with some processors and get the service map pre-calculations pre in the OTEL collector layer. Those pre-calculations are expensive, but they're very important for analytics and make sense of any information presented as metrics. Any questions on traces? I'll try to go a little bit faster and leave time for demo and Q&A on the demo. Good. Uh, then we have open telemetry ingestion. So Ani, the suppose... one... Sorry, if we can do the demo first and then go yes. into the, to the slide, that will be actually better. Like, because open telemetry... Perfect. Demo. Let's go to the demo now. Perfect. Yeah. Let's go to the demo now. And I'll just leave like five minutes for the extension with Spark section later. Perfect. Uh, Lior, you want to take over with the demo? Yes, sure. Thanks. Can you see my screen? No, we can't see anything, Leo. Not yet, no. It's blank right now. Let me try again. So for interest of time, should we um, should we finish the other content and then wait till the demo site is up? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. I couldn't see yeah. the Oh, yeah, okay. Now it's coming up. Now it's coming. Okay. 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 So, as Annie mentioned, we have, first of all, the building capabilities to uh, see the traces, the service map, which is pre calculated using uh, the data prepare. 
we can see all the different services. We can actually jump in to review a specific service. So basically we have the red metrics indicator, which is the request error rate and duration. We can see the trends, 24 hours trend. We see the upstream downstream services affected by that specific service. And by the way, I haven't mentioned it. This is based on the open telemetry demo. We have forked this demo for um, the purpose of actually uh, showcasing the the usage pattern for uh, open search and open telemetry. And um, so we're continuing to um, support this uh, Otel demo and enhance the capabilities based on the upstream for uh, features that are continuously evolving in the uh, open search, uh, open telemetry demo itself. So we have the services, we can go in to see the traces. Um, you can see a spans a waterfall. And we can also go into the specific correlation for a specific service. Let's say we can review associate the traces with this service. So we have a very good understanding of uh, giving a specific service and its traces and how they affect the actual performance for that uh, transaction. In addition, we have the metrics. As uh, seen earlier, we can just select Prometheus metrics and combine them to saving them in a distinct dashboard and we can create a dashboard that federates multiple data sources. In addition, we also have the open telemetry local stored metrics, which are coming also from data prepare. So we have the option of storing them locally or federating them from a remote data source. Um, another interesting, excuse me. So another interesting part is that for the integration, which is the concept we discussed earlier, it's a bundle of assets that we can um, associate with a specific data source with which hold a well-defined schema structure, and for obviously for our purpose is the open telemetry structure. So we have the Otel demo service, which is actually a example of how to use open search as a tool that allows you to investigate different aspects of the application, which is the open telemetry astronomy shop. So here we have the navigation flow. We're starting with the ingestion layer. We can see the spans, ingested metrics, uh, and the general events. We can see them uh, separated according to the service. And we have an uh, option to review specific ingestion uh, graph based on each of these elements. And we can further drill down navigating to the next um, dialogue, which is the overview of the services. We have a list of all the services. How do they connect one another? We, we see the amount of data that is related for each part of the ingestion process. We have the um, alignment of all the services with their duration, errors, and um, request rates. We can review each service, we can select one, and we can also see a very similar way to what we've seen earlier for the uh, trace uh, spans. We can see here as well the trace that uh, conforms into the different spans. So the difference is this is a, a configurable and uh, a general purpose dashboard that can be taken and just 
updated and uh, um, configured according to the uh, requirements. And it is another option for using the building observability trace analytics. We can deep dive into a specific service. Now we can see the service add service. Uh, we can go just to last 15 minutes. Again, we can see the different behavior of the service. This is a uh, request versus duration. Uh, we can see the traces specifically to the span specifically to this service. And we can further continue the investigation and going into the metrics which are associated to that service. We see the metrics, we can review them, we can filter. So we have many capabilities which are just out of the box specifically for the open telemetry uh, protocol and um, and semantic convention. And this is all available if we go into the integration that were showed earlier. This is all part of the catalog. So we can jump into the catalog and see all the releases that we have, integration releases that we have associated with the open telemetry. So the catalog does offer opinionated way of presenting information based on the specific service which comply to the open telemetry uh, schema. We have them as either a complete service that uh, logs, for example, access log for Apache or Kubernetes metrics. And also we have a slight different but smaller portion that we can take a complete component, let's say uh, HTTP network connectivity, or as we said earlier, GAN chart and service uh, indicators, and we can reflect them as a specific individual component. So we have both the overall resource that we can display as an opinionated way of uh, understanding its behavior, its monitoring, its health, and we can also use the convention, uh, semantic convention of knowing that some parts are common to logs and metrics and display that visualization based on that specific structure. So as we said earlier, the uh, dashboard for these uh, components does use the same visualization aspect to review these uh, common um, structured within the open telemetry protocol. Just one note to add over here. Uh, I think these different capabilities are primarily built on the schema layer and the data in the engine or data federated from the engine. As we build opinionated UIs and easy to use getting started, advanced users will always need a composable mechanism. So composability of solutions is also one part which can be accelerated via integrations. And integration is more than a user-facing concept. It's also a developer concept. So you can use its SDK and CLI to contribute and keep on updating it. And it does provide backward and forward uh, version coupling. So, so I think one thing will be good is to pause and like ask some questions, like uh, answer some questions, which before we do more presentation on this. Yeah, let's take questions. Yeah. Uh, maybe yeah. go to. Yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe can you uh, talk a bit on the ingestion? Like you know, if I'm having an application, uh, what are the different options to ingest it and. Yes. So I, I think basically the open telemetry demo gives uh, an opinionated way of ingesting the um, data coming from auto collector. And we can see that in the uh, collector itself. There's a sort of 
quick highlight of how it looks like on the each of the different signals. And specifically, when you go into the uh, pipeline, you can see that we are using all the three different options. So you can pick and choose whichever is the more appropriate. And as always, it depends on the use case. So for our uh, presentation, we've seen we are heavily using the services as a fundamental logical entity, which is actually very important to determine whether the the health of the application and, and the correctness, performance, and, and many indicators are based on the, these um, data data points. So we are using data prepared to calculate the services, but it, it is not mandatory to that extent. So you can ingest data directly using the auto collector, uh, auto collector and the open search exporter. And you can also use, uh, as an example showed here, Jaeger. So you have all the options. If the question is what is the best, where is the best uh, use case to match your the specific requirements, then the, the answer, it, it depends on uh, the, the purpose of this ingesting. If you just want to uh, calculate basically um, features based on the spans and traces, then it's not mandatory to do the pre-processing of the service map. But I think our recommendation is to use the, the service map pre-processing and to, to build these indicators also based on the services in addition. Does it answer the question? Yeah, thank you. I see Shilpa's hands raised. Go ahead, Shilpa. Thank you. Yeah. So I joined the meeting a bit late and watched the recording, but I've got some um, basic questions here. So it is, um, first of all, thank you to you all for putting this together and like um, providing a visualization layer that integrates so well with Otel. So does it also correlate the telemetry data? Um, I saw the visuals that you shared earlier, um, the waterfall diagram, like um, dashboards, all of them look great. Um, does it also- I can take that. I can take that. Okay. So, uh, and we can go through uh, one section also here. So correlations is primarily going to be, um, I'll, I'll divide it into two parts. One is like, you can run your joints, you can correlate anything you want. It is an engine. But the most important thing for observability is how do you, how, how can you do it out of the box or predefined correlations? And that is where the schemas come into effect. So all the data coming from different integrations or from data prepper or from OTLP exporters, all of these data sets following metrics, logs, or traces, and soon profiling, these are schematized data sets in the open search indices. Open search as an engine, when you have data in particular mappings and standardized schema formats, performs really well for high cardinality operations. So you can do correlations based on the schemas fairly easily for the user. From a use case standpoint, the tracing application correlates itself with logs really well today. Uh, the metrics to trace, even though metrics are exported and federated from Prometheus or from open search, uh, metrics can offer correlations directly. They are done as APIs, but we don't have a pretty UI for it, which can be added. If you have data in uh, object store like Spark and you can run sort of correlation commands from Spark, we can show a correlation example. I'll drop a link over here. So there are API capabilities and user facing capabilities. Uh, we do support a lot of correlation power. It's the use cases that need to define it slowly and steadily. What we have seen in the standard use cases, logs to metrics to traces are straightforward, but uh, we need more use cases and more guidance over here. So let me know if you have something specific in mind and I can answer that question. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And also just to be clear, like um, it solves the visualization problem, but storage is still not part of this, right? We need to- um, Storage, storage the is prime. So there are, let me answer the storage question. I think that's a bigger question. So open search dashboards is the visualization system. Open search native is an engine for storage. It's a storage engine, it's a search engine. It supports indices, it supports Lucene-based indices for search and query. Uh, 
and to open search the engine we add a federation capability for data sources which you can connect remote data sources like prometheus or s3 so depending on where your storage is where your cost profile is you can bring everything together and build a solution on top the integrations today to instantly turn on also support s3 so we can get data in s3 for example you're keeping nginx logs in s3 for the last 5 years you don't need to bring them in open source it will be fairly expensive so you can just connect it remote and then query and run federated queries which might be slower but you could run correlations in windows over there or when an alert comes in you can trigger an api to get your dashboard for investigation built up and ready got it say we want to even bypass s3 or another um um storage like can we um export the telemetry data directly from the um, gateway collector over to um, the native open search. That is the way we are approaching it, yes. You can do full fork of streams. You can do a conditional export, meaning some, some data for errors go here, info and debug goes there. Uh, all of these combinations are possible. Got it. But when you say it's an area of opportunity, it's not available out of the box at the moment, but we can definitely extend and build it. Is that right? The APIs and the framework is available out of the box. I think the user experience we need to improve on. Okay. Uh, we can go through some sections over here uh, if we have time uh, quickly, and we can cover how, to, how we can set up these things. I shared a link for you on, on the messages over here which can run through the PPL com uh, commands on Spark. Makes sense, that, that is great. Yeah, and one final question, like um, how, how does uh, OpenSearch scale? Uh, so OpenSearch, uh, being an open source project, I think there are many instances in the uh, like public land which run OpenSearch. I'll draw from my experience running also OpenSearch on Amazon. Uh, we do run the same code base with petabytes of data set in OpenSearch. Uh, outside of open search, infrequently used dog log data can lead to tens of uh, petabytes that I have seen and theoretically into exabytes. Uh, the storage solution and the scaling part, that was a primary concern a few years ago, leading to which we started integrating Spark natively and deeply into open search. Now, if you are a Spark user and you want to accelerate Spark and accelerate object stores, open search is an engine. So you could create secondary indices for S3 on OpenSearch. So all the correlation data, the host information, or any queryable IP ranges or IP range information, you could build as secondary indices from Spark into OpenSearch. So Spark SQL has a native extension for OpenSearch now. So when you run Spark SQL queries, it will use OpenSearch and increase your performance and query time by literally 90 to 95% when you have pre-built indices in OpenSearch for Spark. That is where infrequently used log analytics become way more powerful. Awesome. Or does that answer your question, Chilpa? Yeah, but when you say petabytes, like is it per day or? Uh, per uh, we have use cases for four to five petabytes per hour that we have been going through. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can share more numbers offline if we can't talk. Fantastic. But yeah. the scaling is not a problem of concern. It's the architecture and how you cluster the setup and how you want to build your solution on top of it. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Matt. Um, I can hold questions to the end or if, if you want just a few more that are okay. relevant here. I think it's, uh, it's better to have this interactive. Yeah. Okay, sure. Then there were there okay. were two. One, one is a quickie and, and I'll do that one first. I noticed that you have an integration for RDS, our relational database service logs from AWS. Um, is, is that work, does that work generically with MySQL and Postgres or is that specific to only AWS's RDS? Like, is that just a, what, what, is it right. an integration to generic logs or is it? Is it so no, so RDS is purely RDS. It understands the schema format published by the RDS service. I now see. there are integrations for Apache. I think the Apache integrations, we worked in uh, collaborations with the guys at Fluentbit. And the Fluent Bit exporters do support transformation of the Apache format into the OTEL format, and then the physical simple schema format in the open search. So each of these integrations are fairly simple. You have a CLI that can generate a scaffold 
with the scaffold available, you use open search to create your dashboard, use the CLI again to package it, validate it and publish it. So the idea over here, it, everybody should come and create as many as they like. If you are a MySQL heavy user, you understand what should be the best MySQL dashboards, the best alerts or yeah, setup for visualizations, my, my, and you can keep on question. creating them. Yeah, my, my question kind of came from like the scenario of like a developer that's running maybe MySQL locally, you know, for iterative development, but then running RDS for hosting larger scale clusters. So could the same observability dashboards that use that look at RDS logs if you're running MySQL or Postgres and RDS, could that be? I think I believe they should Postgres? work. I believe they should work, but that's a scenario that is pretty interesting. We did not test it. And the reason I say okay. they should work is at the end of it, everything does come down to the yeah. open telemetry schemas. So the dashboards should not have different naming structures to break. But we do need to like validate them, but it's fair. Yeah. Oh, thanks. So, yeah. And the second, the second question um, is, is you've got this, this dashboard that's really awesome. Uh, for looking at you know services and, and looking at all this observability data, um, the actual setup of Open Search and the dashboard and these integrations themselves is also probably interesting. So, do you kind of can you use this user interface and, and this user experience to diagnose not only objects that are under observation by the stack, but the stack itself? Like, how do you do you use this to also debug the integrations themselves, say, uh, or, or the dashboards themselves, or do you have a separate kind of uh, a place that you go to, to debug open search and its integrations themselves. Got it. So open search itself as an engine today does not have an integration. I think if you add that integration, we could do what you're asking for. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I didn't mean the engine. I more meant like, you know, okay. setting up like, you know, we've just seen like maybe like, you know, close to a dozen different like you know, API keys and integrations. Like for example, say a Prometheus integration has a cardinality bomb where you know, a query that's issued yep. to Prometheus just makes the Prometheus server fall over or take 45 seconds to respond. Like, how would we diagnose that in, in these UIs? Would it, would it require kind of... I, I think that's... We wouldn't... So for each of these use cases, so for Prometheus, we would need a Prometheus integration. Uh, for something else, we would need like an open search dashboard integration. And if you have these integrations, today what Leo showed, uh, that was an hotel demo integration and the hotel demo integration has multiple things together so it's completely composable to take this lower level integrations and build one on top of it each integration defines the schematized semver oriented version and it can specify dependencies so if you go into an integrations ui uh, layer could you jump into the integrations ui i just want to show the schema versioning and the assets as long as those assets and schema versions are in check you could build on top of it. so click on nginx sample for example or the installed engine example. Installed engine example. And these are the assets underneath it. And these assets depend on schematized fields which are available in the integration. So if you jump into the integration, can you click on the template, Nginx template? Yeah, you so could totally if you go in the template. You see the schema fields. The so schema fields are what are used under the assets. And now we can keep on building the integrations as dependent on top of it. And the publishing API will validate for version compatibility. Cool. Yeah, so it sounds like, yes, you could you could use the yes. tool to debug itself. So the integration ha actually, as we mentioned, we are very much uh, hoping and, and trying to engage the community and this uh, phase of development and contribute, whether it's uh, a fully blown integration includes that includes the um, description of the use case, the schema, and the um, assets themselves, which are dashboard and can be queries, they can be materialized views. So we're not limiting any specific asset. We can use any of the existing open search. Uh, plugins to accommodate within that integration. And as I mentioned earlier, in addition, we have a visualization catalog, which also addresses the observability section of uh, earlier was asked, how can we correlate different aspects within uh, different signals? So for example, HTTP, you can use HTTP uh, component and use the knowledge that it has a, a well-defined semantic structure 
to actually take this visualization and put it in um, conjunction to these specific signal that is being uh, observed and can actually correlate from multiple indices. So this yeah. gives some uh, a more advanced usage of using the actual structure that we we know that is um, consolidated within all the uh, open telemetry uh, signals. Yeah, I really, really like how you've made the catalog just part of the repo as well. I would imagine if it's not already built, it makes it a lot easier to actually use this in the context of, say, CI. So, like, if you have a failing CI job, you know, for some change, you could have some static versions of this as artifacts that are created, since everything is all modular and accessible from where CI yeah, would and, run. So that's really and that, that exactly that's the purpose is to simplify the. I think one of the uh, harder parts of the onboarding is to actually start building your own dashboard, and it requires multiple skills, both of the understanding of how to build a dashboard and also understanding the schema. And we try to overcome this with preparing this pre-build and opinionated ways of sharing data and monitoring an application. And we're very much uh, hoping that the community will get engaged in these processes. So we have any more questions on this? We have a dedicated uh, integration suggestion. So uh, that can be the starting point for uh, creating a new integration. It details all the uh, steps that are required. And we have examples, templates that can be used. We also have CLI, which simplifies the process of creating an integration. Um, given that you have already prepared a dashboard. So we have many tools that uh, accelerate the development and, and onboarding of integrations. That's awesome. Um, I was going to wait till the end, but since we're doing this interactively, I'll just get it out of the way so I can stop talking and others can. Um, it looks like as you're implementing all of this in the open and it's all just there, Obviously, um, what's your model for engagement? And I, and I realize a lot of people know how the open search team works already, but if folks are watching this video and they go, oh, wow, that's cool, I have an idea. Like, uh, what, what's the right way for them to engage with the community and, and RPR is welcome? Like, maybe you can address that at the end. At, at the appropriate. It's a great question. So, you know, we, you know, everything is in GitHub, so you can open any RFCs. We also have uh, if you go, uh, I'll just post it in the chat. We have a public Slack channel. Uh, you can directly ping us in the public Slack channel. And then uh, for uh, Ani and I are also in the CNCF uh, Slack channel. So you can like definitely ping uh, me or Ani. Um, but so I will send you those links right now in chat. Thank you so much. This is very awesome. So you can actually track the integration Could, any more currently being, uh, in progress. So we are at time. So one thing I was thinking since it's recorded, uh, we can actually send you also the links I just talked about, including the slide deck. Um, is there a way uh, we can send this to you? Like, uh, Matt, should I just directly ping this to you, or is there a particular? Yeah. The, be the best, the best thing to thank you for asking. The best thing to yeah. do, and I just did see this time. Um, yeah. The best thing to do would be to just put it in the meeting notes doc. There's already a, a paragraph okay. there for your talk, but that's just open. You can put all the links there. That way, there's not some okay. separate non-open thing that's happening um okay we'll do that right now yeah cool anything else we can wrap it up otherwise thanks yeah not for me thank you i've i've, I've, I've i'm going to be using some of this i think i've been building some stuff on the side with some of my downtime and uh 
I, I found myself yeah, almost do try the space. open telemetry demo as a starting point. The open telemetry demo is a great place to start uh, under the open search GitHub project, or you can go from the open telemetry demo and click on open search. I think that one Docker container, once you spin it up, everything just comes right up. That's the best place to start. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Leo. Great. I guess, I guess, last question Is there anything you would like from the tag and from this community that you would, is there yeah. anything on your wish list? Um, so, that's a great question. So, I, I think the thing we want to do is have more conversations with the, this uh, particular uh, observability group. Uh, as we, uh, you know, as we, you know, as we are moving into the Linux Foundation, and we want to really see if there are opportunities where open search can be um, one of the, or even the default analytics and visualization engine for um, for open telemetry because of its capabilities. So we would love to have more discussions and also address any gaps. There was some feedback given in this meeting, but I would really like to understand what additional gaps we should go uh, fill. So that's it's an ongoing conversation. So we would like to be engaged with this community. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I obviously won't speak for the foundation or the CMPF, but I can say at least in my role as tag chair that, you know, particularly in observability where there's so many different modular choices. I, I know that there's, there's no real team makers, if you will. So I don't know if, if default is possible, but I work with that, work, work that out with the hotel community, but but certainly a, a drop in, it just works, seems to be where you're already at. So that's great. Um, I'll, I'll be watching along with everyone else. Um, yeah, this is more of an end user forum, Manandi. So uh, you'll have to engage in the hotel community discussions, which there are huge numbers of SIGs and discussions going on. So it's yeah. It's the open telemetry is something of an outlier with the rest of the CNCF projects, um, where it itself is such a huge, as Jonah said, you know, it's got its own groups and SIGs and all, all, all of that. Um, whereas many of the other CNCF projects um, uh, in the in, in the foundation are much more focused and, and they're singular um, uh, in, in that. Uh, but the tag specifically is a place where project maintainers, uh, end users, uh, uh, and um, and, and contributors can come together. So, uh, but as Jonah said, it does tend to slant towards the end user and how do I, how do I use these? What is this thing um, uh, for the details of specific integrations as Jonah said, definitely follow up with open telemetry and Alalee, there's a great resource there as well. She's deeply involved. Um, so she can help put you in the right direction or just give us a shout in the channel and people will respond, I'm sure. Um, Sounds good, okay. I'm adding all of this in the meeting notes. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.